Well, I remember that when um, Gravity's Rainbow won the National Book Award, it was published by uh, Viking Press, I believe, and the um, publisher, uh, Tom Ginsberg, an old friend, um, on the occasion of the National Book Award, they used to have a big gathering, I think Carnegie Hall, and a big crowd. It was a little bit like the Oscars. They don't do it anymore because um, I guess it was too difficult to get people into the hall. <laughs> uh, somehow the magic of, of winning a book award is, hasn't got quite the panache as winning the Oscar for a film, film stars and all that. But in, in those days they had uh, the ceremony, very much like the Oscars, in which the winner was announced. And the, uh, Tom was fairly sure that Pynchon was going to win the National Book Award, but he knew that Pynchon wasn't going to appear. And so in a wonderful bit of uh, imagination and cleverness, he got this wonderful uh, actor called Professor C Corey. So he came out onto the stage, and uh, Thomas Pynchon was announced, and a great roar of applause because everybody knew that uh, Pynchon was more or less a recluse, and to have him actually appear to get his award, everybody stared at this man, who then uh, proceeded to give a um, acceptance speech. The jury has determined to divide the prize between two riders to Thomas Pynchon for Gravity's Rainbow, which bridges the gap between the two cultures and puts the world of manipulation and paranoia within the perspectives of history. I present this not to Mr. Singer, but to Mr. Pynchon. I accept this financial stipulation, uh, stipend, in behalf of uh, Richard Python for the great contribution and to quote from some of the missiles that she has contributed. Today, we must all be aware that protocol takes precedence over procedure. However, you say, what, the, what does this mean in relation to the tabulation whereby we must once again realize that the great fiction story is now being rehearsed before our very eyes in the Nixon administration indicating that only an American writer can receive the award for fiction. <laughs> I do want to thank you, and I want to thank Brezhnev uh, Kissinger, acting president of the United States. <laughs> and I also want to thank Truman Capote, I thank you. Um, and it, I guess he made it up himself because he was a, a famous for doing this sort of thing. It sounds as though it is logical, but in actual fact, if you listen very carefully, it's not. It's nonsense. It's double talk. And uh, Professor Corey gave this speech, and I guess halfway through it, people suddenly realized that they were, there was a spoof going on. Of course, it got into the papers, and I've often wondered what Pynchon himself thought of it. I suspect he would have, in his way, just roared with laughter and thought it very much appropriate to uh, his situation in literature, at least as being known. So everybody knows. Some people probably thought it was Pynchon. I, mean, I don't know. You never, never can tell. <laughs> I uh, was approached by Herb Gardner to do a thing called Thieves. And uh, Herb Gardner is also a friend of Ginsburg. Or I forget how to pronounce his name, but he was the uh, commanding philosophy in uh, in the Viking press, and being a friend, he asked. I understand from the article that I read, he asked Pynchon if it would be okay. And uh, Pynchon didn't know me; I didn't know Pynchon. So uh, since we didn't know each other, uh, there could be no uh, uh, responsibility as to. Uh, the identity of the uh, guy who was accepting the award because 
they didn't know Pynchon, I didn't know Pynchon. Uh, Pynchon, I wonder if he knows himself, but this is beside the point. Uh, it was a very, very interesting um, uh, assignment, but um, the fact is that when I, everybody thought I was Pynchon there, and I was beginning to think maybe I've been reincarnated.